Get yourself ready, Tim. Throw him over, cowboy. He's a coming. There she goes. I got here comes another saddle blanket. Just like mother used to make. Just like a saddle blanket. Hmm. Did your mother make cakes like that? Just like mother used to make. No wonder he left home. Hmm. Yeah. The one you lazy lopers wouldn't take a try at it. We couldn't do worse than this. Speaking of cakes, I wouldn't speak about them if I were you. I've been figuring. Now, you and Injun and I have been wandering around this country together now for seven years. Mm. And that's uh, 2,555 days. Mm -hmm. And figuring three meals a day, that's 7,665 meals. Ain't that right, Injun? Injun never learned counts so high. Well, if you had learned to, you'd have been able to figure that at 30 flapjacks a meal, I've cooked 230,000 for you two. Oh. And it's pretty tough on both of you if you haven't gotten used to them by now. Another thing, boys, those flapjacks of mine have brought us plenty good luck. Now, how's a flapjack like that going to bring good luck to anybody? Well, every time we split up and you two go to a restaurant for a regular meal, one of us get into trouble. Mm. Mm. Injun like trouble better than flapjack. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose you'd like to see Tim get in the same kind of trouble he did last time came sagebrush. Remember that? Mm. Sheriff Hurley, catch him broken jaw. Yes, and if I hadn't gotten out of town when I did, I'd found myself mixed up in the middle of a gunfight, too. Well, if that Hurley Burley or whatever they call him still in sagebrush, I hope he ain't tooting around no grudges. Well, I hope so, too. Kind of well, like to, like to have this visit home. Quiet one. You two no know Hurley. Him all same snake. Never forget. How do you know so much about Hurley? I know him long time ago. Him killed plenty men territory war. Three cousins from me. One he shoot in back. Oh, so you have a personal interest in Hurley, eh? Yeah. Well, now get this straight, you fellas. We three have been trailing around together for a long time. We've always shared everything. If anything happens in Sagebrush tomorrow, Hurley belongs to me. Understand? Me savvy. Anything you say, Tim. But we three got to stick close together. Well, we always have, haven't we? Mm, we right. stay together all time. Yeah. Even when Tim goes to court in that pretty gal of his. Name's Molly, ain't she, Tim? Yep. Molly Curtis. She's nothing but a kid in pigtails last time I saw her. <laughs> you know that... That kid cried when I went away. Yeah, I reckon you're the one that does the crying when you say goodbye. Huh? Oh, don't be a jackass. Funny thing about gal, makes the fellow want to quit all his cussing. <laughs> hey, that hurt. Mm, him only throw boot. Lucky him no throw flapjack. <laughs> You want this there? Sagebrush Roundup. Big cash prizes. Fourth of July celebration. Say, boys, we're going to go into this town and celebrate. Mmm. Contest, huh? Yeah. You think you go in, Tim? Calf rope. Yeah, there's calf roping contest. Mm. Bronc riding. I might go out and try to kick out a bronc or two. Sure. Looks like we're going to get a little easy money, boys. <laughs> Look, there's a big dance, too. And Pancho, look like you, me, win heap money in horse race. Huh? That is rustling. Well, say, we can't afford to miss this. Let's go into this hometown and look it over. Sure. Huh? Recognize him? Yeah. Tim Reynolds. I ordered to let him have it right now and save Hurley a job. Don't be a sucker. You don't want to rope around your neck, do you? Besides, there's three of them. Come on. What are you fellas going to have? I'm buying, but not drinking. 
No, not today. That's one thing I got again, you, Tim. Some red liquor for me and the half man. <laughs> and a bottle of soda pop for the boy. Thank you, old gentleman. <laughs> You're Tim Reynolds, ain't you? Yes, quiet. Nothing? A surprise to see you back in Sagebrush. Surprise? Yeah. They hardly still rule this room. Well, what of it? Nothing. Just surprise. That goes for me too, Tim. I'm just as surprised as he is to see you in town. Why, Red? Well, I think it's foolish for yourself with Hurley nursing the old grudge against you. Well, now, maybe that's just the reason I came back. Well, I'd keep one hand on my gun all the time while I was in this town. What's up, boys? Tim Reynolds is in town. Where? Cowboy's bar. All right, come with me. Hurley. Giving you till tomorrow midnight to quit town. Or else? Or else I'll run you out on the end of a gun. Well, why wait till tomorrow night? You can start now if you feel lucky. Tomorrow suits me better. I don't want to spoil the 4th of July for your old man and his missus. Have a good time tomorrow. But be sure you quit town by midnight. Pigeon wings with the girls, too. <laughs> this is Bob Curtis, boys. These are a couple of friends of mine, and they're all right. Glad to know you. You know, we often speak of it here at home, Tim. We always like to tease Molly about our cowboy bow. <laughs> well, how is Molly? Oh, she's just fine, Tim. She's inside. Your pa and stepmother's in there, too. Oh. Why, you'll surprise them. Good item, boys. Who are you? You'll have to leave your guns here, boys. Huh? And I reckon we won't go in. You go in. The Indian now mosey over the cowboy's bar. We'll be waiting there for you when you finish dancing. No, if you fellas don't go, I won't. I'll go along with you. Go ahead, fella. But be careful you don't sprain your rope arm holding those pretty girls too tight. You ain't planning on making any trouble, Reynolds. I'm not planning on any trouble. Why? Nothing. If you start anything, Tate Hurley is a man that'll finish her, that's all. Oh. Uh, 
I'll take that. Well, you've got it. Why, hello, Tim. Hello. Uh, well, back here to cause more trouble, I suppose. I, no, I didn't aim to cause any trouble, no, sir. You've caused enough already. Trying to kill an officer of the law, bringing disgrace down on your father's head. I certainly never tried to kill anybody. He did hit Tate Hurley when he tried to arrest me that time, that's all. That's all you're telling, you mean? Don't add to your other crimes by lying, young man. Why'd you come back here to shame your old father? But Dad, you must be all wrong about something or other. I... If there's any decency left in you, you'll leave this hall. That's the very least you can do. Well, I certainly don't want to stay anywhere where I'm not wanted. Hurry, fellow, you didn't stay very long. Have I got to buy another ticket to get out? Give me my gun. Take my hat now, Ma. Why, Molly, fancy seeing you. I heard what your father said to you, Tim. He had no reason to treat you so. Well, I suppose I had no business coming back to this town, knowing the way he'd feel about my row with Hurley. It's your stepmother that makes your father feel as he does, Tim. Oh, I know that. And Hurley is taking out his fight against you on your father. On my father? How do you mean? Take Hurley loaned your father some money against the farm. Next month when the note comes due, Hurley will take the place. How much does father owe Hurley? Two thousand dollars. Two? Oh, I don't think he'll take that farm next month. You mean you have the money? That much money? Well, not right now, but I will have by that time. But what are we doing talking about our troubles? Let's talk about something pleasant. That's the first time I've seen you in ages. Let's talk about something nice. <laughs> you know that the more I travel, the more I realize that you're probably the most attractive girl I know. I'm glad you think that, Tim. But I wish you weren't going away so soon. Because I've missed you. Well, I'm not leaving tonight. I'll be at the fairgrounds tomorrow. But you must go tonight, Tim. You know Hurley has bragged that he'll kill you. Well, you don't suppose I'm going to let Hurley drive me out of this town, do you? I'll tell you what let's do, though. Do you remember an old tree that we used to meet under? Yes. Would you meet me there tomorrow night, say, at 11 o'clock? I'd love it. It'll be just like old times. <laughs> it's a date then. Right. And you'll be there. Mm -hmm. Don't forget. Mm. So long, Mark. Bye, Tim. Oh, Tim, have good time. Oh, he'll have a good time. Mm, fine fellow. Hello, horse thieves. Well, I didn't stay long, Tim. No, I... I found out I wasn't wanted. You see anything of Hurley? No. Why? We heard a couple of gents talking about him. Seems he has his plans laid to kill you. Yes, I, I heard something like that myself tonight. Well, whatever happens, we're following your plate, partner. You suppose I know that? Found out something else tonight, too. My father has been borrowing money from Hurley, and I happen to know he's in no position to pay it back. How much you need? $2,000. If you birds can show me any way to pick up $2,000 in the next couple of days, why, you're magicians. And you'll certainly have that $2,000 by tomorrow evening. Well, what have you got in your mind? Engine's about to set in yonder game of stud poker, and he has a habit of winning. <laughs> what kind of friends you think we are? <laughs> you're the best in the world. But this score with Hurley is my own.
Hey, what's this? Two thousand bucks. What do you think? Gosh, you've got some rotten poker players in this here town. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, just a minute, you fellas. You're not going to try to hand me any money. Oh, you save it and bet it today. And if you give us any argument, the engine now will take you for a whip. Now, you're not going to hand me any money that belongs to you, fellas. I don't want your money. Mm. So take it. Hey, now stop it. Mm. Hey, quit. Hey. Hey, you run a hand with the nerve. Are you going to take it? Hey, if I get up on the hill, I'll quit. Uh, All right. All right, quit. Quit it, will you? I, I give up. I know what I'm worth. Well, you ought to. You needed 2,000 bucks and you didn't know how to make it. Engine and I understand high finance. Eh, hey, Engine? Huh? High finance, savvy. Ah. Well, better get circulating around. See the horses all right and... Get her ropes in shape, and then we'll mosey around and find some place where we'll place our bits where money talks. Say, you know, there are a lot of wild Ranahans in town here right now that think that they're going to take first money in the bronc ride and rope and boat. Well, we'll cover everything they can put on the line. Mm, heap hungry. We eat now, huh? Oh, flapjack. Flapjacks for breakfast. No. Beef for stew. Huh? Well, Tim, it looks as if the events are about to start. You'd better be getting back there. Good luck to all of you. But be sure to hang on to your hat. Mm. Here we go. Mm. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first event of the day is the half-mile race. Win this race. Everything goes. You understand? Leave it to me, boss. Well, from the looks of things, this is going to be a race between Hurley's horse and yours. Well, let me tell you something. You watch yourself, Savage. Mm, me watch him. What's the matter, you look? What's the problem? Get over and give me a break, will you? Maybe you like punch in no. Yeah? Yeah. You ready, boys? Yeah. Okay. Bay Man, written by a man who gave the name of Injun. That Injun's going to get into trouble. Right. The next event is the calf roping contest. Tim Reynolds, local boy, leads off. Boy. Turn out that baby air up any time you're ready. So I'm a tough damp damp now. Seventeen seconds. 
Tate Hurley will now try to regain the calf roping record taken from him by Tim Reynolds. All right, let him go. Time, 14 and 3 fifths seconds. A new record. Pat Patrick, final contestant in the calf roping event. Very good, boy. Pat Patrick, time, 14 seconds. Flat. A new world's record. I told you you could do it, you calf roping idiot. Oh, just a fluke, Tim. That's all. Good. The next contestant in the bronc riding is Injun. He'll try to stay aboard a bronc called Scorpion. That scorpion horse is real poison. Oh. Me, raise on poison. Give it to me, boy. again, doesn't it? Time's up. Let's get him. The next and last ride will be made by Tim Reynolds on dynamite. I fixed boys already. Okay, boy. Turn him to me. Why don't they get it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the first prize in the Bronx Riding Contest goes to Tim Reynolds. You have to take this engine out and work on it. Work on it? What do you mean? He got a couple of broken ribs. Why, you half-witted savage. Why didn't you say something about it? He wouldn't leave the place till after you got... Oh, oh hello. Gee, Tim, well, you were marvelous. We'll wait for you down at the cowboy's bar. All right, I'll catch up to you in a little while. Gracious me, Tim. What will you be doing next? Collecting some money from Tate Hurley and his friends, I hope. <laughs> Tim, that was a wonderful ride. Thank a you. great ride. Thank you. And as for you, young lady, you've got a date with me tonight at 11 o'clock under a certain tree. Remember? I certainly do. As if I could forget it. <laughs> well, don't forget it. I won't. 800, 20, 40, 60, 80, 900 dollars. Ah, there you are, boys. Not a bad day's work. Now, well, that's too much money for any day's work of a couple of cowpunchers like these. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There you are, Savage. Oh, I suppose I've got to give it to you. 
You and your friends had plenty of luck today, Reynolds. I met you at your best game. Back my ability with cash, you won. How about putting up some of your money at my best game? You know some game on level, Hurley? Yeah, wrestling. I'll cover any bet you're willing to make that I can throw you one fall no host barn. Now, if you ain't yellow, you'll take me on and give me a chance to get my dough back. Oh, wrestling, eh? You say one fall, no holes barred? Yeah, I'll take you on. For fun money or old clothes. Now, there's $300. Want to cover it? Yeah. Red hair, I'll hold the stakes. I got a few hundred tools. Say, Tim, he wins. You lack some? I'm taking all bets. Put up or shut up. If you can't wrestle any better than throw caves, and there's $300 more, says you lose. Red, take all the money that Tim Reynolds and these queer friends can lay on the bar. Now, just a minute. I'm in a hurry. Red will take care of your small chain. Oh, this is something different. I understand you hold a note to my father's for $2,000. Yeah, I was wondering what I was going to do with that ranch. I was going to buy that note up. I've got $2,000 here to do it. But you said something a little while ago about somebody being yellow. So this is your game, eh? Tell you what I'll do with you. I'll just bet you that $2,000 against that note. But I can't only throw you once, but I'll throw you two straight balls. No holes barred. Now, uh, are you yellow? I'll take that bet, Reynolds. Bronco busting and roping calves is a matter of luck. But wrestling happens to be my game, understand? My game. Fine. Here's the $2,000. Put up your note. Why, the, the note's in the bank. Lay it on the line. Uh, how about that, Blackton? The bank's closed. Today's a legal holiday. Now, you can see that money. I want to see the note. Mm, you no worry, Tim. You throw him down two times. We guarantee you get no... Say... Don't I know you from some place? No, not me. You know maybe long time ago some of my relation. We all look alike. Tim, I reckon it's up to you now. Maybe Harley and his crowd play tricks. Tim, I like you know Pat and me, we stay close. I know that, Injun. Come on, boys, let's go out and tie him. Where's Hurley? Oh, he'll be along. You know, leave a man in the ring alone, make him nervous. <laughs> An old thing. you witnessed, both contestants have agreed to waive all rules. No host barred tonight. There will be no third man in this ring to call foul.
Do that big steer in less than three minutes. Mm, very good. Mm. Watch your step, Pete. He's no match for you, but he's fast. You gotta use your brain. Threw that big ox over the ropes, Tim. Boy, that was great. I says to myself, Pat, that's the prettiest thing that you ever gazed on. And that we clean up, boys, we're going to leave this town of sagebrush flat broke. Talk about a glorious fort. Yippee! We know our town yet. Curly do plenty more. Watch that tonight. Yeah. Especially Tim. We ain't separate. Sorry, but I'm going to have to leave you boys for a little while. What do you mean, leave us? Well, I promised my uh, well, a friend of mine that I'd meet her about 11 o'clock tonight. Yes. Some lonely spot, I suppose. Well, maybe. I'd be fool like that myself once. But I get cured in Sonora. Oh, yeah? Well, what cured you? Mm, one night I whisper something nice, senorita's ear. And real lovers sneak up thick knife in my back. So you're right to try and take another fellow's girl away from me. Mm, I keep knife long time. And when moon get full and I get loco for girl, I take long hard look at knife. Mm. 
and I stay home. <laughs> Women pretty good. No good for cowboy. Tim, you stay with Pat me, and you keep your health. Ah, uh, don't you folks worry about me. I'll be all right. When you get local like that, there just ain't nothing you can be done about it. Mm, be careful tonight, Tim. Keep eyes, look four directions at once. I'll do that, Injun. I'll see you fellas in about an hour at the cowboy's bar. How did you settle down, Tim? Settle down? How could I? Even if I wanted to, what about Pat and the Injun? Why, we three have been roaming up and down this country from one end to the other for the last seven years. Make them settle down with you. You don't know what life means to those fellows. Campfires at night under the stars. A good horse between their knees and places to ride to. That's what life means to them. Then take me with you when you go, Tim. I'm afraid I can't. Yes. But you'll come back someday? Someday when you've found a little home we both like? Yes, I'll... I'll come back. Sorry to disturb your evening's entertainment, Reynolds. Sage brushes up. Come on, get it, Reynolds. All right. In your hand. Well, Jim, you gone any no go? Someone's taking the shells out of it. You got here just in time to save my bacon. I see a Harley follow you out of town. So I follow him. Harley, you better get out of here before I get this gun loaded. But remember, you'll be at the bank tomorrow morning when it opens to turn over to me that note. Understand? I take Mr. Harley for a long walk. <laughs> What did you mean about meeting Hurley at the bank in the morning? I bet Hurley $2,000 against that note of Dad's that I'd throw him in that box tonight. I won. But I know Dad, had, well, he'd rather lose the farm than take that note from me. I'm sorry, Tim. Well, that's all right, but I'm going to get that note in the morning. And I'm going to give it to you. Now, your mother can figure out some way to get it to Dad so he'll never know how it got out of Hurley's hands. We'll arrange it some way, Tim. Try not to work. I won't. Come on. He's opening up, but our friend Hurley ain't here yet. Yeah, he no come. I tell you that. That note's mine, and I'm going to get it, boys. Come on, let's go inside. Mr. Blackton in. Yes, sir. He's in his office. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Blackton. Good morning. You heard that bet between Hurley and me. I've just come for that note. Why, I'm a banker, not a betting commissioner. I can't let you have that note unless you give me authority from Hurley. Well, that note is here, isn't it? Here in my desk, yes. When Hurley gives me the proper authority, I'll turn it over to you. Not before. Good day. Just a minute, Mr. Bankfeller. You know that note belonged to Tim. And you're going to be right polite and fork it over. But you don't. My gun, jump out and talk to you. This is plain bank robbery. This ain't bank robbery and you know it. We're not claiming anything that doesn't rightfully belong to me. Just remember that.
I'm leaving this note with Molly at her house. You fellas meet me there in about 15 minutes. Right. They fell for it, all right, just as I told you they would. In five minutes, everybody in town will know that Tim Reynolds and his friends robbed the bank. Now get your men together and go after them. Hey, what's the rush, Blackton? We've got some business to settle first. Oh, don't talk crazy, Hurley. We'll attend to that when you get back. All right. But don't try any of your funny business on me. You get that? Hey, mister, what's the matter with the bank? The bank's just been robbed by Tim Reynolds and his friends. Robbed? Yes. A whole lot of bonds and $12,000 in cash. I've got to go and tell my wife. She told me not to put my money in that bank. Looks like we fell into a hurley trap. Yeah. We better go get Tim, quick. Boys, we gotta bring back Tim Reynolds and his thieving pals or their dead bodies. Come on, now. Goodbye, Tim. And don't forget your promise. I won't be forgetting. It might be sooner than you expect. So long. Bye. Hurry up, Hollis. Trouble's brewing in town. What's up? We're bank robbers. Hurley's organizing a gang now to take us. I never believe in running away from trouble. Let's go back and face them. Mm, you want to commit suicide, Tim? Hurley him shoot first, talk later. Here they come now. Are we going to stay here and be shot, or are we going to use our brains? All right, let's go. Everything go all right? Yeah. We lost them before they got three miles out of town. Well, let's get down to business. Okay, but I want to know that those men are not going to be captured. Well, for your own information, I'm not taking any prisoners. Yeah? Well, they've got a long jump on you. Ah, jump nothing. This fellow Reynolds is stuck on that Curtis gal. Unless I miss my guess, he'll be there tonight. And, uh, and it'll be the last thing Tim Reynolds ever does. Yeah. All right. Here's your share, Hurley. Well, I'll count it later. It better all be there. Got some work to do. At the Curtis Ranch? Yeah. So long. Adios. Try that if I were you. What do you want of me? A gun, first of all. Now, 
you and I are going to have a little medicine talk. Hey, this is most unusual. See me in the morning at 10.30. I'm late now for a dinner oh, well, don't be in a hurry. You're going to see me tonight and now. You can't pull anything like this on me. I'm cashier of this bank, a respectable citizen. Oh, you're a respectable citizen, are you? Well, you have to be an angel if you don't do as I tell you. I don't want to make you late for that dinner appointment of yours. I've got a couple of friends over here that want to talk a little business with you. Come on over. Let's go over and see them. Uh, no, we'll take that bag with us. He'll be gone a long time. Oh, he'll be back soon. Listen. Sit down, Blackton. Now, if you can talk fast enough and straight enough, you might keep your neck from being broken. No, forget. I like you as gone. What? What do you want to know? We just heard that Pa Curtis was killed right after he drew his money from your bank. Now, who killed him? I, I don't know. Uh, next time he hits. No, no. Don't hit me. I'll talk. I'll tell. Talk fast and don't lie if you do it to be your last. Tate Hurley killed him. Tell me that again. Tate Hurley killed him, and that's the truth. Why? Curtis recognized Hurley and his men when they held him up. How did Hurley know that Curtis had drawn his money from your bank? Why, he, uh, Hurley happened to be in the bank at the time. I told you to answer straight. Now, Wait a minute. Me. I told Hurley Curtis drew his account out of the bank, but I didn't know what he intended to do. Hurley's the man you want. Boys, that sounds like the truth. He was got in here. Huh. Looks like Blackton's share of the money that we're supposed to have stolen from the bank. Can't hold that bag. You go outside and take a look around, see if the coast is all clear. While the engine and I uh, anchor this fellow here. Oh, you can't do that to me. Oh, no. oh sit down. Mr. Reynolds, your son's in the cowboy's bar. I see him take Blackton in the back door. Come on, boys. Everything's clear along the Potomac. Fine. Boys, I think we can now go and look for our friend, Mr. Tate Hurley. Come on. Now, take it easy, everybody. Don't anyone reach for his gun. All get up and line up along the bar. Come on, all of you. You do. We don't want to disturb you people, but we're looking for Tate Hurley. Has anybody seen him? I've been looking for you. I'm here to take you and hand you over into the keeping of the law. If you've got the slightest spark of manhood left in you, Tim, lay down your gun and face trial. Lay down your gun, Tim Reynolds, or I'll kill you where you stand. 
Blackton just told us how Pa Curtis was killed. The real story. Anyone that said that I was to blame for his death is a liar. I'll give that out with the law. Lay down your gun or I'll kill you. Look behind you! Get away. Let's turn back. Dad, you've got to listen to me. Why are you here? What have you got to say? Blackton and Hurley are the men responsible for Pa Curtis' death. Where's your proof? You're the only man that can help me get that proof. But you've got to trust me to do it. You're asking me to trust you after what's happened? I know you think I'm pretty useless ramming around the country the way I have all these years, but, oh, maybe you're right. There's one thing, though, that you never can say. That is, that I ever lied to you, have I? No. When I give you my word, that if I can't prove those two men guilty, I'll come into town and give myself up voluntarily. Well, I'm listening. Now, here's what you've got to do. Tomorrow afternoon, you ride into Sagebrook. Go straight to the bank. Old man Reynolds drew his account out of the bank today. Yeah? How much? A little better than $10,000. Hey, what are you trying to do, kid me? He hasn't got ten hundred, dollars alone ten thousand. No. He's county treasurer, isn't he? Oh, I see. Drawing county funds, eh? Well, I'd better get going. Wait a minute. You've got plenty of time. He told me he was driving home a load of feed today. Oh, then it'll be dark about the time he's gone through Cajon Pass. Thought you'd outfox me. <laughs> Thought you'd outfigured me, eh? But you didn't know I'd be holding a gun in my hand. Well, try to outfigure these six slugs of lead, because I'm going to give them to you. All of them. Up for Hurley. I'll take those six slugs, Mr. Hurley. I see you've got him. Well, I told you I'd get him, Dad. I'm sorry, my son. I have done you a great injustice. Let's not say any more about that, Dad. There go two of the best pals any man ever had in this world. I guess Pat was right. Three-cornered partnership is over. Are you sorry, Tim? I think I'm going to like it much better this way. <laughs>